So we'll start on releases. Um, as you see, these were pulled from the project before, so that's for the iOS board project and the Android app project. There's my releases. I just click on it and I get this panel at the right here that's going to give me um, the information about that release. I'm just going to give myself a little bit more real estate. Now, this is where we come into one of the first decisions you guys have to make about how you want to plan, is how you want your, your time element to be set in. Um, for our start date, we can either start as early as possible, so physically let's get this release started whenever, whenever there's space to do so, based on other things we've talked about. Um, relative to a previous release, so if you want a kind of cyclical, you know, one finishes, then that dictates the next one starting, a finish to start, um, or a fixed start date. Um, and sometimes for those who are wanting to use milestones in old money and um, do have an agile project as part of a larger waterfall-ish um, environment, which is quite common, then we can use fixed start dates to actually uh, to, to tie in with milestones and things as we're going along. The important bit down here is the release date. Do we want to be a dynamic release date or a fixed release date? So at the moment, I want a fixed release date. Um, 22nd of August for the iOS beta. If we have a look up here, that's on the timeline. That is the, the date that we're talking about. Um, and you can see, because I'm overbooked, because we put too much into this release, we've got too many tasks to do with the resources available, I'm not going to finish it until over here, until September. That's why it's in red. So it's when we've got a fixed release date, you're doing time box planning. That means that of our three things, we are hammering a nail in one of them. We're saying the date is not changing. We're releasing on this date, come hell or high water, and whatever is done, we're going to do for then. In that case, we've only got two things that we can change. We can only really change um, the scope, which is more likely, or resources, which is probably a little bit less likely. But the great thing is, because we're planning, remember, we've, this has sucked all this information out of JIRA, and we've created a sandbox environment. I'll talk more in a second about the touch points with JIRA going back down. But at the moment, we're planning. And the planning means we can change things, see what happens, don't like it, change it again, until we get one that we're happy about, and we want to push that back and, and commit to the changes, if you like, and, and communicate those to our team. So when we've got a fixed release date, all we can do is say, right, this is not going to... I can't get enough stuff in here, I have to uh, take something out. Um, and you would go to scope and you would assign some tasks to another release, or you would go and add some more resources, or a combination of both. If you want to do dynamic release date, if I just change that, I'm just going to click calculate to, to redo my graph at the top here, you'll see, oh great, everything's in green, we should definitely do this. What that's doing is, it's saying that it's just going to tell you when your release date is. So it's sort of saying that my release date for this is now iOS beta up here, 19th September, which we knew anyway because it was in red before. But um, as I add more tasks to it, that release date goes further out. If I add more resources, it comes closer towards me, and a combination of both. So it's a dynamic date, and it's just telling you when you will release based on everything else. So one of the first decisions is when you are creating a plan, do, are your releases dynamic? or fixed? Are you releasing then for sure or do you want to have a look? And the great thing is because this is a plan, and the whole reason we're doing this is to help you be better, at, it's to give you the information to do your jobs better. So the idea is you can go and show the powers that be that they can either have it on this date with less scope or this date with all the scope they wanted. It's just basically giving you the ability to actually pr present to them and make them make a decision. They can't have everything. Fast, cheap and good. So um, that's our releases, and you can just change each of those there um, as you go along. The other thing that's kind of new, which I think is great, is the idea of a cross-project release. Now, bear in mind, these are just matching up to like, your versions or your releases in your Jira project, those who use them. Um, we can create a cross-project release. Um, what that's going to do is, um, I'll just call this my release train A, for example cross-project release. Um, all projects from the plan are included by default. I can change that here if I want to. Um, and again, I'll give it a, a dynamic release date. That's great. And what that does is it automatically creates me a release in each project, but lets me manage it from one single place. So I can manage the dates in that one area, and it's going to push those into each equivalent release in each project. The other thing we've got with releases, the very last thing, is this idea of later. Now, 
every uh, project in your plan automatically has a release called later. And this is great because when we're planning, we, like I know what I'm doing next week work-wise, for example. I don't really know what I'm doing in six months. And plans for all projects are like that. So when you're looking at a plan that is quite long, I want some detail coming up, and then it gets a bit fuzzier, a bit more woolly as we go out. And as you know, things are going to change in a few months. We don't need to be really exact and know in six months' time I'm definitely going to put this epic in this release. So what we do is we just chuck everything else in later, and we'll deal with it as we go along. We're going to find out today one of the, the biggest things I find with uh, project managers and other people who are doing and PMOs and stuff who do a lot of work in here um, is the, the ones who aren't very good at it or aren't very successful is they make a plan from, on day one and it's all very pretty and that's great and don't have that strong release uh, sorry, update cycle to actually go back to it and manage it as you go along. Um, or quite often they're going back to their plan and updating it to what's happened, so you're always getting a second-hand view of, of what's actually going on, which seems a bit of a waste of time. So we'll talk about later, about how we can actually um, use later. It's quite useful for us to not worry about things that are too far off because it's probably going to change by the time we get there anyway. Um, and that's everything you notice about releases. Pretty straightforward. Just the decision I have to make is, are we going to do dynamic and release, and do our releases um, start as soon as they can, or at certain fixed times? And that's the time element of our plan. So one down.